We've always defined ourselves by the ability to overcome the impossible. Unidentified flying objects UFOs have long inspired curiosity and speculation. But when did our fascination with UFOs really take off? A new television drama explores the origins of the UFO phenomenon, drawing from the incredible true story of the government's decades-long investigation of reported UFO encounters. The secret program, dubbed Project Blue Book, launched in 1952 and was monitored by the Air Force until the project's termination in 1969. During that time, experts investigated more than 12,000 reports of UFO sightings, of which over 700 remain unexplained, according to records in the National Archives. During the period in U.S. history that gave rise to Project Blue Book, global superpowers were testing the boundaries of military technology, the likes of which had never been seen before. For obvious reasons, the Air Force wanted to keep tabs on all UFO sightings, which could represent previously unknown weapons. Case reports dramatized by the show feature a range of witnesses, from lone civilians, to individuals representing the military and law enforcement, two groups of people all reporting the same sighting. Television's new scripted drama is based on true events, or at least the recorded instances of possible UFO sightings and the Air Force's subsequent investigations during the 1950s and 60s. Each week, a new case sparks new intrigue, both about the potential for alien life and a government effort to cover it up. All the while, the Cold War looms ominously infusing everyone with a deep unease and paranoia they can't shake no matter how hard they try to stave it all off. All told, however, Project Blue Book still represents a step in the right direction for history's scripted drama ambitions. It digs into a specific and perhaps forgotten portion of history, brings it to life, and has fun while doing it. The series' serious tone certainly suited the folks on the UFOI team. For them, anomalous phenomena aren't merely fodder for a retro TV show. In this age of media mistrust and government dysfunction, maybe programs like Project Blue Book are in line with the temper of the times. Project Blue Book wasn't the government's first UFO study. In 1947, a private pilot named Kenneth Arnold reportedly spotted nine flowing UFOs zooming over Washington's Mount Rainier. The public went wild for the so-called flying saucers. Shortly after, the U.S. government launched Project Sign to determine if such objects were a threat. In 1948, Project Sign reportedly published a document called The Estimate of the Situation, which suggested that extraterrestrials were a possible explanation for UFO sightings. As the story goes, their force officials destroyed the document and launched the more skeptical investigation in the late 1940s called Project Grudge. Blue Book came a few years later. The estimate of the situation was inspired by a mind-boggling event. In the 1960s, their force officials denied that the estimate of the situation document ever existed. Those who vouch for its authenticity, however, say the report was inspired by a 1948 UFO sighting in Alabama, after two experienced pilots saw a torpedo-shaped glowing object zip past their aircraft and rocket into the clouds. The report shocked and baffled many a Project Signs researchers though scientists would later claim the sighting was consistent with a blide, or bright meteor. Blue Book was named after a college testing staple. Whether UFOs are extraterrestrial in origin is debatable. What's undeniable is that, during the 1950s, people routinely spotted or thought they spotted objects flying over the United States and it was the onus of the U.S. military to figure out what they were and whether they posed any danger. Blue Book would earn its name because, at the time, their force officials equated studying the phenomenon with preparing for a collegiate Blue Book final exam. Officials developed a special protocol for handling UFO sightings. The central part of Project Blue Book was the creation of a standardized questionnaire for UFO sightings. Some sample prompts draw a picture that will show the shape of the object or objects. What was the condition of the sky? Did the object suddenly speed up and rush away at any time? Change shape? Flickered? throb, or pulsate. Eventually, every U.S. Air Force base ended up designating a special officer to collect these UFO reports. Thousands of reports were collected and some haven't been explained. By the time Project Blue Book was closed, officials had gathered 12,618 UFO reports. Of those, 701 were never explained. 
nearly half of those unidentified UFOs appeared in 1952 when a whopping 1501 UFOs were sighted. Interestingly, that following year, it became a crime for military personnel to discuss classified UFO reports with the public. The risk of breaking the law could mean up to two years imprisonment. The 1951 Cosmopolitan article, prepared with Air Force cooperation and encouragement, flashed out at the screwballs and true believers who thought they were seeing flying saucers. In the decades to come, others would accuse UFO observers of every conceivable social crime or mental disorder. As a result, only a small minority of witnesses would ever report their sightings, and many who did soon lived to regret it. In 1977 the group of professional debunkers warned the New York Times that belief in UFOs is not only irrational but also dangerous, if sufficiently widespread, civilization itself could collapse. Yet in the face of jeering derision and inflated rhetoric, the UFO sightings continued. The great majority of sightings would be by individuals who would have been implicitly believed had they been testifying to anything less outrageous. Of course, these witnesses were not always right. Even sympathetic investigators found that most reports could be explained conventionally. Few of the reports were outright UFO hoaxes around 1%, according to the Air Force's estimate but sane and sober eyewitnesses often mistook weathered balloons, stars and planets, advertising planes, and other ordinary objects for extraordinary objects. Still, some sightings stubbornly resisted explanation. In the summer of 1947, the Air Material Command AMC was asked to study the situation and make recommendations about what should be done. On September 23, Lieutenant General Nathan F. Twining, the AMC head, wrote his superior with this analysis, the phenomenon reported is something real and not visionary or fictitious. By this time, at least internally publicly it was far easier to prove UFOs didn't exist. The Pentagon reasoning had come around to an admission that, as the probability of foreign devices becomes more remote, there are many incidents reported by reliable and competent observers which are still unexplained. Adding, it seems unlikely that a foreign power would expose superiority of power by a prolonged ineffectual penetration of the United States. The Pentagon position was crystallized by an opinion from its Office of Psychological Warfare that fed directly into Cold War fears. The flying disks could be used for purposes of psychological warfare, especially for creating mass hysteria. Practically until the day the Air Force closed down Project Blue Book in December 1969, it denied that the estimate had ever existed, even when former UFO project officers swore they had seen or heard of it. No one could produce a copy of the document, however, because the Air Force had all copies burned. At least one source disputes this account on the authority of Captain Ruppel, who tells it in his memoir of his Project Blue Book years, the report on unidentified flying objects 1956. Years after the original incidents, the retired AMC assigned officer now deceased claimed that Project prepared two drafts of the estimate. The first draft referred to what the officer remembered as a physical evidence case in New Mexico. The second draft with the offending paragraphs deleted, argued its case solely from eyewitness testimony, of which the Chili's witted encounter was an impressive example. Vandenberg could now claim that, in the absence of physical evidence, no proof existed. The Air Force retired to the custody of the National Archives its records on Project Blue Book relating to the investigations of unidentified flying objects. Project Blue Book has been declassified and the records are available for examination. The project closed in 1969 and we have no information on sightings after that date. From 1947 to 1969, the total of 12,618 sightings were reported to Project Blue Book. Of these 701 remain unidentified. The project was headquartered at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, whose personnel no longer receive, document or investigate UFO reports. The decision to discontinue UFO investigations was based on an evaluation of a report prepared by the University of Colorado entitled, Scientific Study of Unidentified Flying Objects. The review of the University of Colorado's report by the National Academy of Sciences, past UFO studies and Air Force experience investigating UFO reports during the 40s, 50s, and 60s. As a result of these investigations and studies and experience gained from investigating UFO reports since 1948, 
The conclusions of Project Blue Book are 1. No UFO reported, investigated, and evaluated by the Air Force has ever given any indication of threat to our national security. 2. There has been no evidence submitted to or discovered by the Air Force that sightings categorized as unidentified represent technological developments or principles beyond the range of present-day scientific knowledge. And 3. There has been no evidence indicating that sightings categorized as unidentified are extraterrestrial vehicles. U.S. Secret Services considered using the widespread fear of the War of the Worlds type alien invasion as a sinister psychological warfare tactic. Details of the shocking plan once buried in Central Intelligence UFO files are now published on the agency's website. The potential weapon was discussed in a memo from Marshall Chadwell, Assistant Director of Scientific Intelligence, to General Walter Bodell Smith, Director of Central Intelligence, which was sent in October 1952 when the government was deeply involved in investigating the UFO and flying saucer phenomena following an explosion in sightings. The memo was sent at the height of the Cold War and considered if the number of UFO sightings could be predicted or controlled or, more sinisterly, even used from a psychological warfare point of view, either offensively or defensively. It said studies showed public concern, not just in the US but wider, with the phenomena was so strong that many people may be preconditioned to accept the incredible as being true. In government memos marked secret, top officials considered exploiting the UFO craze. I suggest that we discuss the possible offensive or defensive utilization of these phenomena for psychological warfare purposes, wrote CIA Director Walter Smith in 1952. It was on December 2, 1952 that the Assistant Director H. Marshall Chadwell stated the following to agency personnel sightings of unexplained objects at great altitudes and traveling at high speeds in the vicinity of major U.S. defense installations are of such nature that they are not attributable to natural phenomena or known types of aerial vehicles. It was Chadwell's job to select a group of individuals who were deemed to be the right people to tackle the UFO problem. In January 1953, H. Marshall Chadwell Director of Scientific Intelligence and H. P. Robertson, a noted physicist from the California Institute of Technology, put together a distinguished panel of non-military scientists to study the UFO issue. It included Robertson as chairman. Philip Strong and Fred Durant from OSI also briefed the Office of National Estimates on the findings. Government officials wanted knowledge of any agency interest in the subject of flying saucers carefully restricted noting not only that the Robertson panel report was classified but also that any mention of sponsorship of the panel was forbidden. This attitude would later cause the agency major problems relating to its credibility. It was likely that the president at least had knowledge of the actions of the Intelligence Advisory Committee in ordering the Robertson panel to be convened. In the early 1960s, Keith Bowie, Davidson, and other ufologists maintained their assault on the agency for release of UFO information. Davidson now claimed that government was solely responsible for creating the Flying Saucer Führer as a tool for Cold War psychological warfare since 1951. Despite calls for congressional hearings and the release of all materials relating to UFOs, little changed. Unknown to officials, Dr. James E. McDonald, a noted atmosphere physicist from the University of Arizona, had already seen the Duran report on the Rob Erickson panel proceedings at Wright-Patterson on June 6, 1966. When McDonnell returned to Wright-Patterson on June 30 to copy the report, however, the Air Force refused to let him see it again, stating that it was a government-classified document. Emerging as a UFO authority, McDonnell publicly claimed that the government was behind the Air Force secrecy policies and cover-up. In April 1969, Condon and his committee released their report on UFOs. The report concluded that little, if anything, had come from the study of UFOs in the past 21 years and that further extensive study of UFO sightings was unwarranted. It also recommended that the Air Force Special Unit, Project Blue Book, be discontinued. Although the released documents produced no smoking gun and revealed only a low-level agency interest in the UFO phenomena after the Robertson Panel Report of 1953, the press treated the release in a sensational manner. The New York Times for example, claimed that the declassified documents confirmed intensive government concern over UFOs and that the agency was secretly involved in the surveillance of UFOs.
I have journeyed across an ocean of stars to reach you.